Hello friends, welcome to Health Music and Fitness Channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing about the leads V1 to V6. So in the previous videos, we focus mainly on the first six leads. That is lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, and AVR. And mind you, we have to always think of these leads in this sequence because when the machine records the ECG, it records in this sequence lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, and then V1 to V6. And sometimes in the end, it records a long lead 2 as per the calibration and configuration of the machine. Now, as you know, there are six anterior chest leads they look at the heart in the horizontal plane and uh, in this video we will discuss all about the transition zones and electrical rotation of the heart and some cardiac conditions in which the transition zone will move beyond v4 or before v3 transition zone is a zone where the R wave becomes taller than the S wave and that usually is between V3 and V4 lead. Lead V1 and V2, they are looking at the right atrium and the interventricular septum. You have to use your bit of imagination to understand what I am saying. Like in this circle, we had discussed V1 and V2, they are perceiving as the impulse coming towards them when the interventricular septum is getting depolarized. We also discussed in the previous ECGs that interventricular septum is the first part of the myocardium that is depolarized from left to right by the left bundle branch. And some uh, books say it is a septal fascicle that depolarizes the IVS. And at this point, it is also important to note that. IVS is not a very bulky structure because it is very thin. It is thin and it is not bulky and it is like a wall between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. In other words, you can say the anterior wall of the left ventricle is formed by the IVS and uh, the left ventricle, it is bulky. So the more bulky muscle, the more bulky tissue will give rise to more electrical impulses, more tall R waves, less bulky structure, less tall R waves. So V1 and V2, they are looking at interventricular septum. And when the impulse travels from left to right to depolarize the interventricular septum, the impulse is perceived by V1 and V2 as if it is coming towards them. So there is a small R in V1 and at the same time there is a small Q forming in V5, V6. We discussed this in the previous ECG. Welcome back. Uh, I had to take a short break to edit the video starting and I forgot what I had discussed in the previous clip. So my son just reminded me that we were discussing about bulky LV and small r in v1 so even a six standard kid can also understand ecg so there is no reason why an mbbs student can't understand the ecg okay so we'll start we'll continue v1 and v2 they are looking at the interventricular septum so the impulse is coming towards v1 v2 a small r is forming in v1 at the same time the impulse is going away from v5 and v6 I discussed in the previous ECG electrically V1, V2 are inversely proportional to V5, V6. If tall R in V1, V2, deep S in V5, V6, tall R in V1, V5, V6, deep S in V1, V2. So this sort of pattern will continue and uh, uh, we have to remember that when there is a small R, something negative has to happen in V5, V6. So there is a small R, there is IBS depolarization. At that point, the V leads over the bulky LV where the depolarization has not yet reached. It will record a small Q. So it is a normal healthy Q wave 
in the lateral leads. This is very important. You can get a short MCQ question and whether this is a pathological cue or a normal cue. A normal Q wave will be denoted by a small Q. It will be less than one small square in duration and it will be less than one third of the R wave. So this is a just a side note. You, you can remember what is a normal looking Q wave. Welcome back. Now the as the impulse depolarizes the interventricular septum, then it spreads via the right bundle branch and depolarizes the right ventricle, left bundle branch, divides into left anterior fascicle, superior laterally, left posterior fascicle, inferior medially, and these two fascicles, they depolarize the left ventricle. And slowly, the amplitude of the R wave keeps on increasing as we keep on moving towards the bulkier side of the LV, the lateral wall will be the bulkiest. And uh, so the transition, there is a transition zone between V3, V4, where R wave eventually becomes taller than the S wave. That is the transition zone. In certain conditions like uh, uh, severe COPD, uh, you can get a transition zone after V4. So the transition zone will be shifted to between V4, V5 or sometimes even between V5, V6. So that is called electrical rotation of the heart. And if the transition zone moves towards between V2, V3 or V1, V2, that is called counterclockwise rotation. Like in severe right ventricular hypertrophy, you can get this type of uh, ECG, the electrical rotation. Now there are two schools of thoughts. Some people say the heart actually physically rotates and some people say it actually it is just an electrical rotation of the heart and the heart doesn't rotate physically. When we are talking about clockwise and counterclockwise rotation, we are presuming as if we are standing at the foot end of the patient and like the patient has been put in a CD scan machine and we are standing at the foot end and looking at the heart from the foot end of the patient. So if there is a bad COPD, so you can imagine the right ventricle moving anteriorly and coming more anterior and the LV is going more posteriorly okay, from the foot end of the patient. So what will happen? The left ventricle which had to make tall R waves and make the transition happen between V3, V4 that is delayed because the LV has gone posteriorly. Okay, the heart, the RV predominates in that state, and as the RV is not very bulky, in the previous videos we discussed, right ventricle is not very, not a very bulky tissue because it has to just pump the blood into the lungs, so it doesn't get to exercise much until unless there is a bad COPD or. Uh, destroyed lung because of tuberculosis of the lung or some interstitial lung disease. In that case, the right ventricle can be hypertrophic, but usually the right ventricle is not very bulky. So when the right ventricle is predominating the formation of the QRS because of the electrical rotation, the transition zone will be delayed. Now, on the other hand, if there is right ventricle hypertrophy, the transition zone will move from V3 from between V3 V4 to before V3. It can be between V2 V3 or V1 V2. There will be tall R. Or if there is a true posterior wall infarction, the transition zone can move to the left side between V1 V2 V2 V3 because the R wave is tall. As we know, we'll discuss later also. In posterior wall infarction, there will be a tall R and a tall T and uh, how do you diagnose posterior wall infarction you keep the same ECG in front of the mirror you will get a mirror image you will get a deep Q wave and an inverted T and uh, we also discuss that whenever you diagnose a posterior wall infarction look for inferior wall MI look for right ventricle infarction and vice versa if there is a inferior wall MI immediately look in V1 V2 is there a tall R wave tall T wave in V1 V2 which could mean posterior wall infarction Look for right ventricular infarction. Look in leads V3R, V4R. 
easier elevation and coving which could be right ventricular infarction because of the common blood supply so these three things happen together it is not definite but usually it happens like that just to summarize there is clockwise rotation and there is anti clockwise rotation in clockwise rotation the transition zone shifts from beyond v4 between v4 to v5 v5 to v6 because of respiratory conditions like bad copd and if there is a right ventricular hypertrophy the transition zone can shift bef before v3 so we it can be between v2 v3 v1 v2 or in a posterior wall infarction and uh, the significance of transition zone in patient management uh, is uncertain another thing you should remember is v5 is at the tip of the lv at the apex and v6 goes little posteriorly laterally in the next videos we'll discuss about various blocks we'll discuss about right bundle branch block left bundle branch block left anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block these are the easy ones so we'll start with these blocks in the next video the other blocks connection blocks av node abnormalities sa blocks and atrial and the ventricular arrhythmias we'll discuss in the later videos thank you